the moment you pass on number one, even if it's the most optimal decision to trade out of number one, it might not be the most optimal for Ryan Poles and maybe Matt Eberflus, right? Because the moment you commit to fields, you have to show results very quickly. The moment you trade fields and move on to a rookie quarterback, realistically, you're going to get three years. Maybe some of the fans will be super mad, right? But some of the fans were super mad when you got rid of Mitch. They'll get over it, especially when we know this is the truth. They're going to be, what do you guys think? 50% of current hardcore fields believers that will suddenly have always been fans of whoever the Bears take at number one, if that's what happens. Right. Well, they're definitely not right. watching any damn Falcons or Raiders game when he gets traded there. So they can shut up and like stop because like, they'll become the biggest the Caleb Williams fans. The biggest Caleb Williams fan. Exactly. And it's it's all more to say that I think there's a lot of layers to this. I don't even know if the most optimal decision for the organization is the question, because for Ryan Poles, whoever you have or whoever starts a quarterback in 2024 is now your guy. You you could pass. You reasonably could pass on Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. Both had major draft question marks. Just because C.J. Stroud looks amazing now doesn't change the fact that he had nearly 20 games at Ohio State where he looked afraid of pressure and one where he didn't. Why should we have known that how he played against Georgia was exactly how he was going to play damn near every game in the NFL, right? Yeah. But so you trade down, you make the team better, absolutely defensible move. If you let Caleb Williams go and he's a star, Justin Fields is your guy and you live and die by what mm -hmm. he produces, probably in year four. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if you have to extend it. Yeah, yeah but you know, there's also a, a situation where because of how good the other draft picks and the free agent signings are performing, that as Ryan Poles, you can sit there and make a case going, okay, we sat there and we lived through his contract. We lived through his rookie contract to totally year can. four. And now... We're going to sit here and, you know, reach out for a veteran quarterback and have a better chance of keeping our jobs with the guy that knows what he's doing. Totally they can at funny. least dink and dunk like the league is dictating and whatnot because we built up the talent on the roster. So, yeah, there's like you said, there's a lot of past. It's and just, like, first of all, you know, we all know for the Bears and the McCaskies and all that, like every GM kind of gets like two to three bites at the apple. The second one's usually the one that matters, and the third one is kind of like a dying whisper kind of thing. Unless like, you're Phil Emery and you bomb it. Yeah, Unless you're exactly. Ryan Pace and you just keep hitting time extension, but keep right. going. But that's part of it, right? Is like you get, you know, Ryan Pace or, uh, you know, Ryan Poles. Like if you're starting your second bite of the apple with your new QB in year three, arguably, I think that's a bit early to take that second big bite. Um, I think one more year with fields in the rebuild, and then you take your big bite of the apple. You know, I think that's because even then you could take, you know, an unhappy quarterback like Justin Herbert and say, Hey, we'll give you fields at a first round pick. And we just swap quarterbacks or something. That's where you can take that risky bite of the apple. The second part of that is, yeah, you lock yourself into it. And then this is one of those things that we keep talking about as if we we're playing everything as if it's a, uh, it's to be predicted. And then all for all we know, the wrench that could just be thrown right in is Kevin Warren doesn't like Matt Eberflus, no matter how he, well he finished the season. Matt Eberflus is gone, and Ryan Poles and Kevin Warren's favorite guy is Ben Johnson or Jim Harbaugh. And Jim Harbaugh comes in and he goes, I'm not taking the job unless I get Caleb Williams. Yeah, no, then you or, have I'm not getting I'm right. not taking no, the job unless I get Drake May. Right. Then you have and this is my darling, and this is the coach I know that will set us up for the next five to ten years, mm -hmm. and he don't want fields. To your or point. there's a quarterback or there's a coach out there that just Jim Harbaugh goes, you're telling me I get to have Colin Kaepernick 2.0. If you trade fields, I'm not taking this job. So a lot of this is also just variable like effect on trickle down stuff of Ryan Poles could love Justin Fields. But the guy that's the coach that he loves is like, I'm not a huge fan. Can we get a first from Atlanta? And, and, I'll, finish on. On, and I'll finish on this. Everything you just mentioned is why I think the next four games are going to be absolutely psycho crazy. And it's also my opinion. Part of why next week's game against the Browns is honestly probably the biggest win-win of the season. If the Bears lose against the Browns, okay, chances are Matt Eberflus has bowed out, right? It's a brutal league, but right now, Matt Eberflus probably has to run the table to reasonably, not, not all the way, but at least you have to start there right? You beat the Lions. You did the thing. You can't just drop games again, 
Because while you might be on schedule with what we all predicted early, you're stuffing all these wins in the back when Ryan Poles' roster looks so ready to go and you have that number one overall pick and you're going to have agents calling you, whispering, you know, out of turn, right? Saying, hey, my guy would love to coach for you guys. And that's those are the kinds of calls that I tend to think are going to weigh on George McCaskey, Ryan Poles, and Kevin Warren. And so will I think, to your exact point, Dave, you nailed this. The biggest problem here is that the Bears have to be a year early if they are going to make a move. It feels unnatural because it is unnatural. They got the number one overall pick on accident. I don't even think when they traded for DJ Moore and a future first, they dreamed of a world where the Panthers would be this dysfunctional, right? So if you're going to move on from Matt Eberflus, you have to do so par- partially because of the opportunity that the coaching hire presents you. Like, to your point, I think Caleb Williams with um, with Matt Eberflus is a very weird mixture, right? <laughs> but also... A new head coach with Justin Fields feels equally weird to me, like sticking with the whole squad or getting a whole new squad feels a lot more natural. So Cohesive what do the Bears want to do? Yeah. Justin Fields then becomes the guy who's the guy who's had th- three offensive coordinators in four years. And 